All right guys, welcome back to the channel. And if you're new here, thanks for stopping by. Hit the subscribe button now because each video builds upon the previous day's analysis and I wouldn't want you to miss out on any of the analysis. Today, I'm looking at what happens before parabolic moves. Now this is for Bitcoin, stock markets and real estate. I might as well get it out of the way now. You're at your home of macro cycle analysis. They're all the things we cover here. That's why you hit the like button and stay classy. I can't take the credit for that. It's one of your comments. So thanks very much for reminding me about Anchorman. Let's kick it off with a quote before we get into those big parabolic moves. I think it's important just to reset our minds here for the next stage. It's not to say that there's no such thing as an, as an overvalued market, but there's no point in worrying about it. This is from Peter Lynch, one of the best hedge fund managers of the 80s. I believe it was 11 or so straight years, 20 plus percent return each year. This was a time when there were no meme coins. Of course, he had to put his money into real things and doing that year after year with millions and millions of dollars is a very good feat. So, Peter Lynch says there's no sense in worrying about overvalued markets. And I bring this up obviously to the point of the, uh, the title, looking at parabolic markets, what happens before them. And if we find ourselves caught in those parabolic markets, there are going to be so many things that are overvalued, but continue to ride the trend. As he says, there's no point in worrying about it. Just continue to go with the trend until the end. So let's take a look at some of the data for the next, well, the forecast for the next few years, just looking at what happens in these big bull markets or the parabolic moves. Year three of bull markets, we are where we are now. So 2024, these bull markets on average go around five years. So if you're measuring from 2022, that takes you to about 2027. Good news is that the this is the third year of the bull market. And if they make it this far, they tend to have multiple years left in them. I'm willing to assess the data as it comes through month by month, quarter by quarter, as opposed to just believing that we have to wait until the end. Uh, I hope that's everyone's view, but nonetheless, let's have to take a look at uh, year three here. You've got the percentage higher, 62% of the time it's higher. It looks like we're on track for one of those years, six out of 10 times. This year will end higher than it began. Years one and years two, they were looking pretty sweet there. You got 100%. And then as you uh, move on in the bull market, it gets a little bit clearer again until you get to around year seven. Now, I'm not suggesting that we go seven years from the low, but if we get further than that, well, then each of these other years continues up. There's a 100% chance of more gains. Let's just, again, assess it year by year. And this year is going to take us out to about October of 2025. I think we're going to have a green one. You let me know in the comments whether you think it's going to be green until 2025. Guys, I'm trialing something a little different here. I know the videos are quite long and from the feedback from you, you're saying that you want them shorter. So what I'm doing here is taking out the excerpt of a particular mini masterclass, as you can see on the uh, right hand side here, around how I use failed cycles to my advantage, of course. And so if you want access to that absolutely for free, link in the top of the video description for our free TIA report. That'll get you access to the free discord, which is where I'll post this mini masterclass. As I said, something different to hopefully try and shorten the videos. And I'll do that for other future mini masterclasses as I'm editing the videos, uh, because I think they might go on a little bit too long and it might be more beneficial to those who just want to see some of that uh, free learning for themselves and to benefit those who aren't interested in the mini masterclasses. Anytime I find one of these mini masterclasses within a video, it'll be posted in the free discord. So make sure you're checking that discord and you're on the free TIA email report list. Back to the video. So moving on from that, looking at some of these parabolic moves, uh, as, I, as I said earlier, we can see that as we get to those election times, the prices either start to grind higher or they continue to grind higher or out of nowhere, seems like nowhere, you see a bit of a correction and then the pump continues or the pump takes off and gets more vicious. So it goes up faster. And going back to the 90s, you've got the 92 election. There is all these red arrows are basically where the elections are. And you can see the price came up. It pauses for a bit, starts to break through to new fresh highs again. Sometimes they're all time highs or a lot of the time recently over the last uh, 30, 40 years have been new all time highs. Sometimes it can just be new fresh highs. Essentially, you get this grind, bit of a pullback, and then it just starts to go again. The market's going up. We are in the 
second half of the real estate cycle, which I'll get to in just a second. But just recapping some of these moves here, before the parabolic move, we've had corrections to wash out essentially the paper hands, the weak hands, those who think the market is due for a recession, due for a correction, a collapse, a crash. A lot of that weakness is coming out of the market. And then once that weakness is left, there's nowhere else to go apart from up until the end. And sometimes these moves can last for a long time, a lot longer than many believe they can last, which is why I brought up this one earlier on. It seems unlikely. It seems crazy to think that this could keep going on for years, but it's happened before several times. Uh, one, as I'm bringing up here, is the dot-com boom. We're obviously seeing tech pretty heavy in the uh, the narratives at the moment with AI. Maybe we get a repeat, something like this. It's hard to know at the time what could basically cause the movement to get faster and faster into the peak. Look at that from an angle perspective. It's not the same angle as it was back here as it was grinding higher. The angle increases, and then the angle increases again, and then the angle increases again, meaning it's going up by more points at the same time frame. So you have one year here, you have one year here, you have one year here, and the points increase are getting more and more. It's, it's as basic as that, which is why you're seeing these angles increase. Now, are we seeing that now? I would argue yes, and we don't need to really argue about it. We just need to put in some angles for ourselves. And that is the angle previously. Here we are from the current low. If this market is to reach that peak again, that's going to be at the same pace that the market moved up from the COVID low to essentially that end of that bull market, right? The peak of January, 2022. So if it does that again, reaches somewhere around uh, just over 6,000 points over the coming months, that would be at the same pace that it did back then. And as you look throughout this entire bull market, well, you can definitely see that the pace has increased and it seems to be increasing again. And so just by measuring this previous move, you can see that we have more room to move to be at just at the same pace as the previous move up when they printed a ton of money, trillions of dollars, right? And so this can go even further at a faster rate which typically happens towards the end of the cycle. Basically, in that winner's curse phase, you start to see these markets move faster and harder. Now, you could argue that it didn't happen in 2006, 2007 into that peak. I would say, yep, you're right. Didn't happen in that peak. It doesn't have to happen every single time, but it seems like we're on that trajectory now to do it. So in 2003, 4, 5, it wasn't really on that trajectory to get back to that top, considering you already had a very, very hard and fast move up to that peak. But this time uh, around, we've basically been grinding our way higher, which seems crazy, you know, because we've had a lot of, a lot of new all-time highs. But now we're basically on track for the same sort of uh, price ascension. And if we're to get there, maybe this can go faster and harder. I, it blows my mind how it could happen but it's possible. We've seen it before. You can go back into history going to uh, 1920s, of course. You can see the grind up and then it gets faster and faster into that peak. And that lasted for several years after the real estate top. Okay. So the economic and real estate cycle top was around 1925, 1926. And the stock market continued on for another three years after that at a faster and faster rate. So nothing is out of the uh, the question yet. Uh, you've got the 1980s, that peak just got faster and faster towards the peak, big correction. And then you had the top of the real estate and economic cycle around 1989, 1990 before the recession came. Now, some will obviously argue, well, you've got the 60s and 70s here. It doesn't seem like we're following this similar path. I could be wrong. It's there. So we'll have to reassess if we start to see things change. But for now, we are on the way to um, uh, higher and higher prices, which seems like it's the beginning of that parabolic move. Now, I've got this on logarithmic as well. Don't worry, I'm going to get to Bitcoin and cryptos in a sec. The point of this is we need to see this go crazy, obviously, for Bitcoin and cryptos. So if this signal or this indicator is, is, is playing out, then I would expect, at least in my opinion, for my own analysis, I'd expect a similar sort of thing to happen for Bitcoin and cryptos. But if I see this thing start to falter, 
then I would probably question my positions for uh, Bitcoin and, and altcoins as well. For now, things are on track. I've put this onto a logarithmic scale and you can see the tops coming in at the moment. We're getting closer to that logarithmic top either this month or uh, maybe November, December, we start to reach that peak at about 6,000, at which point maybe we find ourselves um, getting a correction there and grinding around before we start to head higher again. But what I've seen in the past is the markets break out of these logarithmic channels and then they go ballistic. It won't look like much on a logarithmic chart, but when you look at it in terms of percentages and price, that could be anything like up to seven or 8,000 points before it starts to work its way back down into this, uh, back into this range here. And that would be a pretty severe correction. As I said, I think that's a little way off. We haven't even broken out of the logarithmic channel at the moment on the S&P 500. So we'll continue to, to follow that up, but I don't think there's anything to worry about at the moment. Now around the globe, we are seeing new all-time high prices. One for my Aussie viewers, New all-time high on the S&P 500. Drop it back down to a daily. Here we are, Thursday. New all-time highs getting close to 8,400 points for the first time in history. So it's not just the US that is getting the gains here. And this is essentially where we are. Winner's curse phase. You can see that the line is just saying things typically get a little faster into that peak. And essentially, it's to do with house prices and the economy. Things really ramp up before you get this big move to the downside. Just like anytime you see in crypto things boom up, they come crashing down. I've got some meme coins to show you as well, just how that is happening at the moment on a, on a shorter time frame, and it happens time and time again. So that's the winner's curse phase that we're in. Prices continue up. There hasn't been anything different to suggest that this time is, is different and we're not in this winner's curse phase, which essentially means higher prices, more volatility and more people thinking that they are legendary investors and traders. The house prices for the US, sometimes this gets questioned by some viewers thinking that, well, my area is not going up. Yeah, maybe maybe you live in New Orleans or Austin or San Antonio. Uh, you've got a few of those that are going down. However, the vast majority of them, at least that are recorded here on Zillow, are going up year over year into September. This is just the, the raw data. And this is just an average. When we look at this, it's basically an average overall. And if I look at the average here, roughly around 2%, there is the United States, 2.36%. Year over, um, I believe this is year over year into September here, a uh, lot of places going up, at least desirable areas to live. That's also represented on the Home Builders ETF. Uh, new all time high here. Home builders are making profits. That's their earnings. And so the market is seeing more earnings for home builders. The start, or we're currently in a parabolic move to the upside. Typically, after parabolic moves, things aren't good. But as I said, I think there's more time into it. That leads us over to Bitcoin and crypto. Fear and greed index is a greed. Good signs. We're not getting into extreme greed yet. We don't want to get it to greed or extreme greed too quick because that can overheat the market and then you have to spend longer at these uh, market sentiment resets in your values of you know between 30 and roughly 50, 60-ish. What we're also seeing before big parabolic moves are the exchange volume uh, picking up or at least putting in higher lows before it starts to break out into new fresh highs. We saw that in 2020, you can see these higher lows beginning to form on the chart, a breakout into new all-time highs on exchange volume, meaning more money coming into the system, could be more new traders or existing traders putting more money in, uh, but then you start to see the move get higher, faster, more money coming in, 150 billion tops. I would go out on the ledge here and say we're going to see bigger exchange, uh, seven day moving average exchange volume than what we saw at the previous peak. Maybe you guys think the same. Let me know in the comment section. I think it almost has to be that way in order for Bitcoin and the, the now larger caps to break into new all time highs because their, their market caps are so much bigger than what they were back at the peaks of um, the 2021 top. As it currently sits, we're around $30 billion of the uh, daily exchange volume higher lows forming. And once we start to break out of these tops, sorry about this little thing here, it's pretty annoying. Um, you've got the tops about there and there. That line of the gray line is about 50 billion. So break out of 50 billion would almost confirm that we're on the way to this big parabolic move to the upside. So what we see before 
the parabolic moves. You know, this happens before para, para, the parabolas is basically a breakout of the exchange volume, more money coming into the system. Now, this is a spot market total volume for cryptocurrency exchanges, including some of the majors there, Binance, Coinbase, uh, Bitfinex, and more. Now, if you want to understand or better improve your results with trading, check out TIA Premium. You can get some of the results like our traders and members in there. You can chat to people, general chat, and plenty of other uh, channels here so that you can hopefully get yourself on track for this next stage, this possible parabolic stage. Uh, if you just want to see the results and see some reviews from members as well, check out the link in the top of the video description here and that'll come to your inbox so you can get onto the free Discord to have a look at it for yourself. Look at the trading results, everything that all of our members have posted here. You can look at the TIA reviews here that um, you guys have posted in or the members have posted in and then make your decision up from that point. Moving on, looking at Bitcoin now and some of the other indicators that we see before these big parabolic moves, uh, we typically keep an eye on the average true range. All right, we're back at some significant support around this sort of $2,000, uh, I think there's 2000 a day. And that brought us back to these lows or the market basically grinding lower here uh, in, in June. So what I'm looking at here are support levels coming in after a few pumps, and then you start to see a breakout to the upside, which brings on the parabolic move. Essentially, this is just looking at the trading range for the day on Bitcoin. And it seems like we're, we're beginning to see very similar patterns to what if, what's happened in the previous cycles. You see this pump up, you see the market grind lower. Basically, it's a boring market. People lose interest in it. They just want to stop trading and leave the market. And then almost like without warning, you see this big pump up of, it could be 100 or so percent, going in this case, 700 bucks to $1,200 the average range increases and that brings a lot more interest back in and you'll see this happen on the chart. You'll see it happen on the average true range and then you'll see it also on um, the trading volumes like you could see back at that time. And you'd obviously also see greed creep back in. Do note that after those periods, you might get pullbacks. However, the pullbacks, if this is a true bull market and a true parabolic move to the upside, the pullbacks from here on will likely be less than the previous pullbacks, less in terms of time and less in terms of percentage, but not always. We have seen some bigger percentages. The main thing to note is the time frame. Typically, you'll see the uh, the volatility quite wild, so big moves, but the time frames will be relatively less the more the market moves on. Sometimes, like we saw in 2021, the move was so quick and violent to the upside that it needed a lot longer to pull back here. And this one was several months, August through to July. The bottom was May through to July, and then it started to move higher again. However, from that point, it was basically lackluster for BTC into that final top. Altcoins had their day. There were still some pretty big moves there. But essentially, in these moves to the top, the pullbacks get less and less until they don't, which is a sign that maybe things are beginning to roll over. If you start to see the pullbacks larger, and especially if you see that three day rule, three days straight from a, a key peak, that could be a warning sign that things are turning over. Long time to go until that point. That's at the peaks of parabolas or significant moves, right? What we're looking for now are the signs that we could be on the verge of the next breakouts. Now, with that in mind, if we do get the pullbacks, I've talked about how the timeframes can be quite uh, uh, much shorter than the previous pullbacks within the bull market. What I'm looking at here are the quarters and then I'll look at the months. So if you are looking for pullbacks, remember this and it could save you in the bull market. Like if you're hoping for lower prices, if it's in a parabolic move, you typically won't get severe uh, pullbacks, or at least you won't get them for a long period of time. So you really need to have your plan in order to take action and to get back into a move, right? So looking at these last couple of cycles here, the last few cycles, the thing I'm noting here is roughly two to four red quarters in a bull. But then what about once you break out into that sort of parabolic stage? Well, the previous cycle had four red quarters in total. And then as it broke out, there was only one red quarter to speak of before the final peak and then the bear market came through. The 2017 peak, one, two, three red quarters before the breakout and then there was no red quarters after that point and the cycle before that, you only had two red quarters 
a couple of um, very small green quarters before the market took off, broke out into that final parabolic move to the top. So that's looking at it in terms of the uh, the quarters, but I also want to have a look at the months. But before I do that, let's have a look at the altcoin market and what we might see before the break out into this parabolic move. Now I've just taken time frames here, looking at um, higher highs, higher lows as well. So just taking a, a look at the trend of the market from the low for this cycle, about 101 weeks. The reason I've used that is just looking at the last cycle. Now remember, these things don't have to occur exactly like the last one. I'm not trying to look for perfection. I'm just trying to look for some similarities here. And if we are starting starting to see them, well, that could bring on something like that, right? And so that's why I talked about this earlier. Actually, I'll get to the, the monthly um, so that if we do break out, don't be trying to wait for significant major, major corrections uh, and lower and lower prices. It might go lower from the point that you buy, but as long as we're still in a macro bull market, you should, in theory, looking at the probabilities, you get the idea here, not financial advice, it should move up towards the end of the cycle, right? Obviously have stops in play just in case it doesn't. So from here, 101 weeks was uh, right to that point where the altcoin market, our total three, our true total three, this is our TIA crypto total market cap, which excludes Bitcoin, ETH and stable coins. We're able to do that by the click of a button. So I'll turn that back on. At that point, you can see the week closed above this top, above this top, above this top, and got to that tipping point of around $100 billion in total market cap. It paused for a little bit, but it didn't come back underneath those levels. And this might be that period where people think, oh, it's broken out one more week and then it's all over. That's it. We had the breakout and it pauses now for one, two, three, four weeks, right? That's enough time. A month is a pretty decent amount of time for people to lose interest and to think that the move is over, that they've been duped once again. And then it basically takes off very, very quickly. The next week, highest close that it's seen in the entire bull market, and then continues higher, breaking out of those next, whoops, breaking out of those next tops there at 180 into that final peak, right? So about 100 ish or so weeks, which is essentially two years from that low. This red arrow is the election. So let's have a look at current action. We're seeing higher lows at the moment. We're seeing support above significant levels. Uh, that's about 50%. And then we're also seeing a bit of rejection here at the current 50% around 480 billion. Uh, the election's coming up 101 weeks, takes us out to December 2nd. And like you saw in the previous cycle, it did pause after that as well, broke out and paused. So if this is able to break out of say 580, 650, and then pause, I wouldn't be expecting too long of a pause considering the correction and the time frame of this correction that we've had. You just take a measure from the peak to the current price, 31 weeks. That's uh, what's the rough number for? Nearly eight months, right? Nearly eight months of a correction here. So try not to get greedy when it comes to any of the movements. If the time begins to run out and your price hasn't been, been met and you start to see the swings move higher, it's probably telling you that time's up and we might see a breakout before you see a breakdown. So personally, I think that's the best way to play this next stage so that we don't get greedy with our entries. Also noting that yes, prices can come down just have an area in mind that you're willing to get out at a loss. There's no harm in taking a loss in the market provided you stick to your rules. So that's the altcoin market there. Now, the last couple I wanna look at is uh, Bitcoin. It happened before these big moves and once the big moves start, probably not much time there either. And then ETH, BTC, getting close there. So the Bitcoin liquid index, uh, just taking a quick look here. Big consolidations. We've looked at this many times on the channel before. Obviously, if you've hit the subscribe, you, you'll see these come up in your newsfeed. After the, that point, then you get these pretty significant moves to the upside with not much of a pullback, at least on the monthly chart, right? So basically no pullbacks there. Six months takes us out to uh, about April from that point, but from the low, which is where I prefer to measure these from, it takes you to around Feb. So it could be five months, six months, it's going to take you to January, February from that move. That's if we're going to break through in the next sort of month or two. It could just be on its way. Yesterday, I did look at reasons why we could see corrections in November, but we're just looking at months here, big moves to the upside. 
Previous cycle, same thing. You had a couple of red months in here, then bam, straight to the upside. And what I was looking at here is how many red months underneath or before you get these big parabolic moves uh, of red compared to once you're into that parabolic move. The last cycle, you had 11 months of red and five months of red above it. So 11 months under, five months above. The cycle before that, so let's draw, draw a line through the top here. You had 10 red months and only one red month once you broke into the parabolic move. So I'm trying to make the point here is obviously A, don't get greedy. Uh, the time frames are going to reduce and you might not see the same sort of corrections like we did earlier. This is essentially about shifting. Should this be that parabolic move? Should this be this next stage of the bull market? It's about shifting the mentality and shifting the mindset from what we have been in to what we could be in. Of course, I don't have the the crystal ball here, but things, the, uh, the market goes through, through seasons, right? And this season that we're currently in might be coming to an end. And then we enter the next season and the next season is different. It's like going summer and winter, summer. You're not going to be dressed the same as you are in winter. And finally, before we get to these parabolic moves, ETH BTC, at least in the last couple of cycles has done relatively similar things, uh, about eight weeks out, eight weeks from the election, it gets a low ETH BTC and then things start to go a little crazy here. It could take a few more weeks uh, until you get to the parabolic moves. And I just look at it in terms of what would the feeling be like in that week? Because that's essentially what we all see over YouTube and X, all of that emotion from whoever's writing it, right? And you'd see the emotion in that particular week thinking, I'm on this, I've got a huge bull market ahead. And those who didn't get in earlier would say, shit, I missed out. Basically peaks and corrects. This is about two, four, six, seven, seven or eight weeks, two months of boredom where the price basically corrects and tries again and corrects. And people will probably think it's over. And then without, almost without notice, it takes off to another top. So we're currently about two weeks out from the election. So maybe about 10 weeks out from an ETH BTC low. The next cycle, quite similar. There is your November election, two weeks out from it, which is where we currently are, two to three weeks. Getting into your low, again, roughly about 10 weeks from that low point in ETH BTC without notice, bam, up, corrects. Oh, it's over again, bam, goes up. And that's basically the majority of the move done. When you look back on history, ETH BTC didn't really outperform Bitcoin for the last um, few years. So are we at a similar point in terms of a time frame that would take us to uh, just before Christmas? So let's take a look at that in um, future videos. Hit the like and subscribe. That's the date that we are aiming for for this sort of lowish period somewhere in early to mid December. And I'll see you guys back here at the next video. Until then, take care and peace out.